Alright everyone, welcome back to my channel, Baseball Talk with Snake Morgan. So today was the 2018 Major League Baseball trade deadline, so I'm covering a few of the bigger name trades that happened today, or more recently. Um, in a second video coming out probably tomorrow, I will have the rest of the trades that I didn't cover already. So we're going to hop right into it, okay? The Pirates dealt for Chris Archer, and they got him. Insane. Uh, ex Tampa Bay Ray pitcher is now most likely going to be the ace for the Pittsburgh Pirates and this really helps out the Pirates in their postseason career or future. Um, let's just see what happens. So the Pirates sent over outfielder Austin Meadows and right hand pitcher Tyler Glasnow to the third place Rays and when I say third place I mean in the American League East. Uh, if we're going to look at the wild card, the Yankees and Mariners currently have a wild card spot and the Oakland A's are next, then the Angels, then the Rays. So the Rays have to beat out the Angels, Oakland, and the Mariners um, in order to make the postseason. I don't know if that's going to happen now without Chris Archer, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely find out. So uh, a few notables here is that the Rays worked with little to no rotation and used a lot of their bullpen guys. Um, Archer will help conquer games for the Bucks, and they have a better wild card opportunity than they did before. Um, if you look at the NL wild card, uh, currently the Brewers and the Diamondbacks have a wild card spot. And then it's Braves, Rockies, and Pirates. So the Pirates definitely could climb up there, sneak into the postseason. But the only time I'll tell with that one, Chris Archer, definitely a good trade. Pirates won that for sure. Now we have the Brewers, and the Brewers actually obtained a uh, second baseman from the Baltimore Orioles, Jonathan Scope. Um, Right-hand pitcher, also Brewer's seventh-ranked prospect, Luis Ortiz, and fielder Gene Carmona, who's the 14th prospect in the Brewers' farm system, and Jonathan Villar all went to Baltimore in exchange for this one second baseman, Jonathan Scope. He's really good offensively, defensively. He's amazing. So we all know the Orioles are going nowhere in 2018. They're mostly looking towards the future, which I actually really like about them. They could be a really good team uh, in a few years with all the prospects they're getting. Um, Milwaukee Brewers are in first place right now for the wild card race, and I just see both teams doing really well from this trade. I think they both won. Um, of course, again, Orioles are looking more towards the future, so right now they're not going to win this trade in 2018, but maybe 2020, 2021, they definitely have a good chance of making the postseason. We're moving on now to the Dodgers, and they have a two-player trade with the Twins. So Dodgers get second baseman Brian Dozier and ex-Blue Jay reliever John Axford for Logan Forsythe and two minor league players who I don't know the names of. Um, but the Dodgers are currently first place in their division. So they have a wild card spot. I'm sorry, not a wild card spot. They have a postseason spot already. Um, they're looking pretty strong. They have a crazy good infield, uh, minus two injuries here and there. So Brian Dozier will definitely make up for that. And um, now Kelly Jansen will be backed up too. He'll maybe have a little bit more relaxation uh, when he comes into games with John Axford, probably coming in before him. So... I think both teams potentially could have won the trade. Um, the Twins didn't really get a whole lot back. Uh, they got Logan Forsythe, which I guess is okay, but that's definitely a downgrade when you're talking about Brian Dozier. So I'm going to say that the Dodgers probably beat out the Twins just for this one by a little bit, but uh, it was definitely pretty close. Now, this is one that I really don't like on the Tampa Bay Rays half. Uh, the Phillies received the all-star catcher, Wilson Ramos. Now, I love this trade for the Phillies. Um, I'm going to go see the Phillies later on in August, so that's amazing. Can't wait to see them play. Hopefully they'll win now. Wilson Ramos is an amazing bat. Great defensive player. Um, he was in the All-Star game this year. He's really good. Bounced around teams, though, so it's interesting, interesting to see him now on the Phillies. Um, the Phillies sent over a player to be named later or cash considerations. So it's either one player or a little bit of cash, but Tampa Bay definitely lowered their standards here. Uh, they got nothing, essentially, for an all-star player, okay? You could have dealt Wilson Ronald somewhere else, got a few players, a few prospects. I just don't see this going anywhere for the Rays. I think they did terrible with this trade. Uh, for the Phillies, though, there is a downside for this trade as well. Uh, Jorge Alfaro, or Alfaro was supposed to be the big-name catcher. He's a future star, so he's really well for the Phillies, and now he's going to end up on the bench or as a backup guy when Ramos gets the day off. Um, so I don't know. I just, it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. Um, like I said, though, Rays really lowered their standards. I didn't like that. But, hey, they did what they did. And, um, 
Oh, that's going to end out that trade. So now we got Cubs. They have Cole Hamels now in their starting rotation, which is insane. The Cubs sent the Texas Rangers left-hand pitchers, Eddie Butler and Rolly Lacey, or Rolly Lacey, uh, with a player to be named later. And the Cubs received starter Cole Hamels, who's not having a great year this year, but definitely could turn that around, especially if he gets a postseason opportunity. Um, I'd say at least for now the Cubs won this trade because they do get Cole Hamels, these prospects I've never heard of, and I'm a decent Cubs fan, so I don't know, I just don't see the uh, Rangers coming out with much. They only have Big Sexy really now as a pitcher. I don't really recall anyone else off the top of my head there, so that is what that is. Um, but now we're going to go back to the Phillies. They had an interaction with the Mets. The Phillies actually uh, obtained infielder Estrubal Cabrera from the Mets for a double-A right-handed pitcher, Franklin Kilome or Cologne. Um, as Jubal Cabrera is crazy good, plays second, short, third, crazy good bat. Uh, the Phillies definitely lucked out with this one. I mean, not really though, because the Mets just don't do anything at all. They don't spend money. They really don't get big names back in trades. So, um, yeah, I definitely see this working out for the Phillies. And I think as Jubal Cabrera will definitely have a good chance of making them a better team. It'll definitely help them get a little further in the postseason because I do see them going a long way this year. And finally, for today's video, we have the D-backs and the Twins. So they had a trade and collaborated together. Uh, the D-backs actually acquired Eduardo Escobar. And um, the D-backs sent three minor league players to the Twins in return. I don't know who the minor leaguers are, uh, but Eduardo Escobar is definitely going to be getting time in at third now that Jake Lamb is out for a little bit. Um, Eduardo Escobar, though, we've seen a lot of him this year on the Twins. He's been doing really well, so I think the D-backs, who are now, I think, like a half game behind for a wild card spot, um, having Eduardo Escobar and having him hit home runs and just being on that team is going to be really solid, and the Diamondbacks should get a good run out of him. And uh, yeah, that's going to end this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like, comment, and subscribe, and look out for my trade deadline part two video coming out tomorrow. I'll see you all next time. Peace.